Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 11th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D endless runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering some collision with the coins, sound effects as well as adding in some background music. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So every game like this will have some form of collectible. Whenever you collect it, it disappears and plays a sound and that's what we're going to do in this particular tutorial. It's crucial to a lot of feedback on how you are playing the game. Music is vital. Sound is vital. So let's start by creating a new folder in the assets. Right click, create folder. We'll call it audio. And in here, uh, we'll create another folder for effects. And then another folder once again for ground music. So BGM. Uh, I'm going to import the background music first. So I'm going to drag and drop this into here. And you can get these assets for free if you go to the pinned comment, click the link and download them. It costs you absolutely nothing. Remember, the scripts are there too. And let's go to effects and import the other audio file right there. Next, we need to add these into our game. So let's go to level controls and let's go to create empty. And we'll call this audio. Uh, right click on there again, create empty. We'll call this BGM. Back onto audio, right click, create empty, and FX. And then on FX, create empty, we'll call this coin collect. So what we're doing here is effectively creating a clean and tidy hierarchy of parent and child so we can follow things down so we know exactly where they are. So now let's drag and drop this coin sound effects onto coin collect. And if we press play, you'll hear it sound straight away. There we go. We don't want that to happen. So what we need to do is turn off Play on Awake over here in the inspector panel. We only want to be able to play it via the script itself. So how do we do this script? Well, it's really, really easy. Let's go to scripts, right click, create a new script, and we'll just call this collect coin and open it up in Visual Studio. Now this is one of those scripts that we are going to continuously modify because we want it to be able to do different things rather than just play a sound. Well, for all intents and purposes in this tutorial, all we need to do is to trigger the event to play a sound and then make the coin disappear. So remember that word, trigger. It's important to what we're doing here. So let's get rid of the update and start methods because we do not need them. Uh, what we do need is a variable for that audio sound, sound effect. So serialize field inside the square brackets. And it's an audio source. And we can call it anything we want, but let's call it coin FX semicolon. Now, remember I said, remember the word trigger. That's because the method we're going to write is on trigger enter, i.e., when a trigger enters or when it's been triggered it does whatever is inside the method so void on trigger enter and it doesn't need to be private so we can get rid of that and inside of brackets here you can see it says collider other don't worry too much about that i'll go a little further into it as we go into uh, development more and more but it's essentially you could think of it as just another variable so what do we do when we enter this coin well we want it to play the sound so coin fx dot play open close bracket semicolon what we also need to do is disable the game object whether we delete it or just turn it off because if we don't the coin sound will continuously play all the while we're inside that trigger area so it will just keep going and going and going and going until we leave the trigger area but if we say this dot game object dot set active false as it's predicted there and save the script, it will stop it and it will only play the coin sound once. So still remembering that word trigger, it's important. Let's head back into Unity 
And now let's add coin collect. My, oh, my battery. I need to sort that out. Uh, let's add coin collect to our coin. And if we scroll down, we can see coin effects right there. So we need to add that coin effect sound, drag and drop. So that our coin now has that script, it's got everything attached. However, if we press play and try running into the coin, it will not work. It's crucial because coding is not always just about coding, it's about the right setup. And you can see it doesn't do anything. Now, on the coin itself, if we go to the collider, it's got his trigger. So let's tick his trigger right there. Now, what we have to establish at this point is yes, it is a trigger. And yes, it looks like it's still set up correctly. However, once again, if we run to the object, even though it looks like it's set up, it's still not going to work. There are different things that we have to remember when it comes to setting things up to work. And we'll just see, nothing. What we are going to do is, we could theoretically do this next bit on Timmy himself, but what I want to do is set up a new game object which we can use to be a trigger. The reason I want to do this is because I want to physically show how these things are working. So on Timmy, let's right click and let's go to 3D object and let's click cube. Let's call this cube trigger system. And on trigger system, I want to scroll down and add component. Let's go to physics and let's click on rigid body. Down here, you should see constraints. It may look like this, it may not. But if you have constraints open, click on freeze position, X, Y, Z, and freeze rotation, X, Y, Z. And what this will do is it will basically create the trigger event and it will make it occur. So if we now move this trigger system into the front of Timmy, round about there, let's see what happens now. Something different will happen. And I will also show you what happens if we don't correctly set up that rigid body as well, just so you've got an idea of why it needs to be the way it is. Excellent. So we can now collect that coin. So the rigid body on the trigger object is what makes everything work. A rigid body you can think of is creating physics. It's, it's relative to everything around it and it's important. You can see that it looks a bit funky now because it's not set up right. And that cube is just not behaving correctly at all, which is why we do need to freeze all of those there. Next, let's untick mesh renderer. So Timmy just looks normal as ever. He looks like he's not got a big cube surrounding him or he's stuck inside a cube, which is exactly what we want. So now it just looks like the game as it was. However, we can now collect the coin. Excellent. So if you remember, we imported another asset. Well, why don't we get that into place now and I have the audio play. So let's drag and drop that BGM onto our BGM object up here. Drag and drop. And what this will do, because we've got Play on Awake active, ticked right there, it will play immediately. Now this is probably going to be quite loud. I think it'll be quite loud anyway, so we might just quickly adjust this as soon as it starts. Whoa! Yes, that is loud. So if we have a look here, we can change the volume and even the pitch if you want to. There's plenty of other options to play around with if you feel the need to, but for now, we just need to have the volume down a little bit. Let's keep the pitch as it is, because there's something I want to do with the pitch a little later on in development for a little bit of fun. And you'll soon see what that is. Excellent. Okay. I'm happy with how this is. So it's starting to feel much more like a game now. Uh, and it's looking really, really good. And if you've played Timmy and Mousy, which was linked in the pinned comment in the first tutorial, you'll see just how much this is starting to become that endless runner style game. So what we're going to do in the next tutorial is we're going to cover some UI on the screen to say how many coins that we have indeed collected. And I think that will be really, really useful. It'll really start making it look more like a game, more like a purpose to what we're doing in the game. So. 
Remember to subscribe and click on that notification bell to stay up to date with every single tutorial still to come in this series. And hopefully, I will see you next time.